and, and greetings from English Language Teaching Center ERTC. I am Chitra Adiodi from the English Language Teaching Management Department in ERTC, the moderator for today's session. With us today we have Dr. Kalminder Jitkor, the Deputy Director of English Language Teaching Center, Ministry of Education. Good morning, Dr. Mindy. Good morning. Welcome to the webinar. Thank you, Dr. Chitra. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to speak on Tawaran One of Sechara Perchuma untuk mengenal pasti tahap kesediaan CEFR readiness, pegawai perkhidmatan pendidikan option bahasa Inggeris Kementerian Pendidikan Malaysia berdasarkan Common European Framework of Reference for Languages (CEFR). For the viewers' information. There are about 49,000 pegawai perkhidmatan pendidikan option bahasa Inggeris in schools and more in PPD, JPN, IPGK, ELTC, matriculation colleges and the divisions. So, Dr. Mindy, yes. can you please explain what this phrase means? Mengenal pasti tahap kesediaan or CFR readiness. Okay, thank you Dr. Chitra. And first and foremost, let me wish a very good morning to all the audience out there. Well, CEFR readiness, a very interesting topic. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the Malaysia Education Blueprint 2013-2025 and the English Language Roadmap 2015-2025 have clearly stated that all English option teachers are required to achieve a minimum of CEFR C1 for their proficiency levels. Since 2012, English option teachers have been taking a number of proficiency tests such as the CPT, the APTIS, DEMOET and many more in order to identify their proficiency levels. However, ladies and gentlemen, there are still teachers who have not achieved the required minimum level of CEFR C1 proficiency. Let me share some statistics with you. To date, we have 14,000 teachers who are at C2 or C1. We have 9,000 9, teachers who have taken the test but have not yet achieved the required level of CEFR C1 proficiency. Then, there are 26,000 teachers who do not know or who had not yet identified their proficiency levels. The MOE in this regard is offering a one-off free test, which is the MOET, for all English option teachers as well as officers in order to help them identify their levels of proficiency and also to achieve the minimum level of CFR C1. And in this regard also, two official letters have been sent down. One to the teachers through the state education departments and one to all the English language officers uh, in the JPN, in the PPD, as well as the MOE divisions to inform them of this special offer. At the same time, a set of FAQ have also been distributed for all teachers and officers to know about the CAFR readiness exercise. So Dr. Mitty, can we please uh, repeat on who should take the test? Okay, let me uh, make this very clear to everyone. All English option teachers and administrators in schools should take the test. All English option officers in district state education departments as well as MOE divisions should take the test. So you can see this on the, uh, on the screen. You will see that there are two groups of people. The first group of officers are those who are required to achieve a minimum level of CEFR C1. The second group are those officers who are required to achieve a level of CEFR C2. Now it is important to note that this offer only applies to teachers and officers in the MOE or then those teachers and officers from the MOE who are seconded to other divisions or other departments outside the MOE. Okay. Do all the officers in, the, uh, in JPN, PPD and the divisions, do all of them have to take 
and achieve a C1 or C2? Okay, um, those who are at a C1, uh, this will include teachers, uh, this will include officers uh, who are at a JPN and a PPD, it will include SIP partners, and uh, those at C2 will include lecturers, teaching or educating teachers at the uh, teacher training divisions as well as the universities. Uh, and uh, it will include SISC plus officers and also those uh, who are uh, directly, involved. directly involved in all kinds of uh, English language um, duties or responsibilities as their core jobs. So I understand that those who are directly involved in English in their specific uh, job specifications, they have to be at C2 levels in the divisions. Yes, that means if you put it uh, in a simpler manner, all those who tugas hakiki, yeah, involves them to uh, perform using the English language directly. Now these officers need to be at a C2. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are very clear that the English language officers in JPN, PPD, divisions who are directly involved in English have to be at C2 level. Yes. But those who are not directly involved, but they are English option officers, they have to be at C1, C1. level. True. Next uh, question, Dr. Mindy. When will the test be held? Okay. Now, the test is conducted by the Majlis Papreksa and Malaysia. Registration is now open and closes on 15 December 2019. So I repeat once again, registration closes 15 December 2019. So for those of you who have not registered, please do so very quickly and do not miss this uh, free offer that is being extended by the MOE and do take the uh, proficiency test. The test will be held in two sessions. All right. The first session is in February and the second session is in July. Now, the dates for the February session are as follows. 22nd of February 2020, uh, this will be the uh, written component. Uh, the speaking component will be held from the 26th of February to the 2nd of March. The second session in July, the speaking component will be held from 13th to the 16th of July 2020. The written component will be held on the 18th of July 2020. These are the dates. Dr. Mindy, can the teachers and officers choose either sessions? Yes, the teachers and the officers can choose to join any session that they prefer. But once you have selected a session, and if you wish to change the session later, then there will be a payment. What about the venue change? Will there be a payment too? Yes, if you change the venue, then you'll have to make the payment as well. So once you have decided and registered, Try not to change the venue, try not to change the date, stick to the date and do take the test. Okay. If they have to change the venue or the session, who do they contact? Okay, if you have to change the venue or if you have to change the date of your test, please contact ELTC or then directly MPM. And uh, Dr. Mindy, who need not take the test? I'm sure there's a group which need not take the test. Okay, all right. Now first, all English option education officers who have already achieved a level of C1 or C2 on the CAFR do not have to take the test. This is according to their groups. Teachers, C1. Lecturers and uh, officers who are directly dealing with English, C2. So if they have achieved, if you have achieved, you do not have to take the test. Now those who have taken the CPT, you have taken the aptest, the IELTS, CEPT, TOEFL or MUET in 2012 and you have achieved a level of C1 or C2 according to your groups, you don't need to take the test. Okay. Now the third group are those who will retire within two years from 1st January 2020. So if you have two years to ret retire from 1st January 2020, you do not need to take the test. And uh, Dr. Mindy, as we know, IELTS has got a validity period of two years. Okay. So are we taking that into consideration here? 
Okay, at this point in time, we are putting aside the validity period. As long as you have had, a, a, as long as you have achieved a C2 or a C1 according to your group, we take that as your proficiency level. So we are not looking at uh, the issue of validity at this point in time. I'm sure it, there is a yet added to your <laughs> sentence. <laughs> there is a yet added. Um, however, because we want to encourage all teachers to come on board and to be able to identify uh, your levels of proficiency. So we are saying right now that since 2012, if you have documentation, evidence saying that you have achieved a C2, we take that as your proficiency score. Uh, Dr. Mindy, why do we need to know the CFR levels of these teachers? Okay, another very interesting and I think a very significant question. Now, it is important for the uh, Minister of Education to know where teachers are in terms of their proficiency levels. This is important so we can um, decide the type of training that can be extended to teachers in order to upskill and to enhance their proficiency levels. It will also enable us to decide if we are uh, you know, to call in agencies yeah, from the uh, external uh, peripherals of MOE, meaning other agencies who can come on board and also provide teachers with the right level and the right degree of uh, upskilling. Uh, so our teachers are able to achieve the aspirations of the MOE uh, come to or to five that we all have teachers who are highly qualified in terms of their proficiency levels. That's a very good idea, Dr. Mindy. Thank you. Okay. What, uh, as we know, we have non-option teachers teaching English in our schools. Exactly. So, do these non-option teachers sit for the CFR readiness? Okay. For all the non-option English teachers who are teaching and uh, they are teaching dominantly many lessons uh, uh, of the English language, these teachers are encouraged to take the test in order to know their proficiency level. Okay. And uh, how does a teacher apply for the test? Okay, in order to apply for the test, teachers and officers can, re can register through the MPM portal. Uh, you will be given a link which is the APPS dot MPM dot EDU dot my stroke CEFR stroke P-U-B-L-I-C stroke R-E-G-I-S-T-E-R okay. uh, What is so special about the CFR readiness test, Dr. Mindy? Uh, all right, another very interesting question. Um, what is very interesting about this uh, CEFR readiness exercise is that English uh, language teachers and officers who sit for the test uh, in February or then in July and uh, if they do not achieve a level of C1 for any one of the skills, uh, they are able to take the skill again, so they are able to repeat a component. Let's say you have listening, speaking, reading and writing. So if you get C1 as a teacher, you get C1 for three of the uh, skills, but in your writing you got to be two. So you are able to repeat this component. If you have set for the test in February, you repeat the component on a date given by MPM. If you have set for the test in July, then you get to repeat the component and on another date given by the MPM. However, teachers can take a maximum of only three skills when they are uh, repeating. So the uh, individual components up to three components can be taken. Uh, beyond the three components, you got to take the whole test. Now, there, is, there will be payment uh, that the teachers will have to make as well as the officers who are taking individual components. If you repeat one component, you pay 50 ringgit. If you um, are taking two components, then you have to pay RM75. And if you are taking three components, you have to pay 100 ringgit. So, this uh, payment is only for those who wish to repeat individual components. Now, anyone uh, who does not register uh, between now and December 15, they are not entitled for this uh, uh, exercise of uh, repetition by skills. Yeah, that is the question from the public that we have. Okay. Can teachers who have not registered for uh, CFR readiness, that means they do not take the CFR readiness, can they go for these components later? Okay. 
Um, at the moment, uh, only those who register for this CEFR readiness exercise are allowed to take the test by components. In that case, that means the teachers have to take the whole test first. Yes. They have to take CFR readiness. Then after the results are released, yes. they find out which component they lack in and they take the test. Exactly. So you have to sit for the test first, either in, July, in a February or then in July. And they also have to keep referring to the MPM website to know the dates of the test. The, yes, the repetitions. The sort of repetitions. Yes. All right. Yes. There's also another question. How is ELTC going to help officers and teachers to prepare for CFR readiness? <laughs> Okay, uh, as uh, I think many teachers already know by now, uh, ELTC uh, offers uh, proficiency courses. We have face-to-face -face courses and we have had a lot of teachers coming on board. Uh, since 2012, ELTC has trained more than 18,000 teachers for the proficiency test. So how can ELTC help? ELTC provides training, ELTC prepares teachers to uh, be uh, ready to sit for the test on the given dates and uh, training is given face to face, training is given online and we have also uploaded lots of materials online for teachers to try during their free time. Right. And uh, we have, who do we contact? I mean, who will the teachers and the officers contact for queries? Okay. If there are. So uh, if teachers and officers uh, want to contact, you can contact um, officers in ELTC, uh, Dr. Chitra, yourself, you are one of the officers. You can contact Ponsarina and we also have uh, hotlines. Uh, these are the hotlines 06 7979 or 06 199. So you can call these lines and you can ask uh, any questions that you would like uh, in order to uh, clarify uh, any doubts or uh, any questions that you have regarding the CFR readiness. Okay, we have another question, Dr. Mindy. What are the special benefits of having the CFR C1 level for the teachers? Minimum C1 level. <laughs> For the teachers. Benefits of having the uh, CFR C1, one is um, uh, when you apply uh, to become an SISE uh, plus or when you want to uh, apply to become an examiner, you are required to have these uh, levels of CFR C1. Will it help those teachers who want to apply for scholarships? Uh, yes, it will also help because if you are going to ask for a scholarship to become an English language teacher, whether at a master's level, uh, if you are a non-graduate to a degree level or if you are applying for a PhD level, and if you are applying in the field of English language, then CFR C1 becomes a requirement. Uh, Dr. Midi, can we repeat some of the tests that KPM uh, recognises for them to take Okay. to know their proficiency level, please. Okay. So currently, uh, the uh, Ministry of Education recognises the aptist. This is offered by the British Council. Should anybody want to take this test, you can uh, uh, contact the British Council and ask for a date to sit for this test. We recognise the MUED, which is uh, a homegrown test uh, by the uh, MPM and it is also aligned to the CEFR uh, framework. You can take the IELTS, I-E-L-T-S, uh, you can take the CEPT, there's also the TOEFL, T-O-E-F-L. However, you need to, uh, when you are sitting for any one of these tests, find out from the providers whether these are tests for C1 or are they tests for C2. Because some of these tests are set at a C2 level. Uh, for instance, TOEFL, it is set to a C1 level. So any person taking a TOEFL, maximum you will get a C1 level. If you are a lecturer and you are taking TOEFL, then uh, it is difficult because for lecturers, the level that you need to achieve is a C2. Okay, Dr. Mindy, uh, one last question before we sign off. Okay. Uh, will this uh, CFR readiness offer be repeated? <laughs> <laughs> okay, another very interesting question. Now, this is a one-off offer. So uh, this is the only time that you're going to get this offer and it is free uh, where the uh, MPM as well as the Ministry of Education 
is ready to fund the teachers. Uh, and this is a step to encouraging teachers to identify your proficiency levels. Uh, so it is a one-off offer and it may not be repeated again. So please take this opportunity and please register. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to repeat what Dr. Mindy said. Please sign, sign up for CFR Readiness. And if you have any problems or any issues regarding uh, registration, please uh, send your emails or you can call the numbers that we have uh, shown you just now. And uh, this offer is only one off. It, will, it may not be repeated. So please sign up for this so that uh, we can provide ELTC or KPM can provide appropriate training for you based on your proficiency levels. Thank you.